Hey guys, happy Friday. I hope everybody's doing well out there. Uh, today we're gonna talk about some more hardware like we did last Friday, I think. Uh, if I'm gonna continue to do videos on Friday, uh, I'm going to, if I need to make a video on hardware, Fridays are gonna be hardware days. Uh, I think that's just kind of a, a good way to round out the week. Uh, if I've got uh, videos about hardware, that's the day I'm gonna do it. So. Uh, today, we're gonna talk about uh, a new little vice, device that uh, was sent to me uh, earlier this week. It's called an IODD2541. And uh, there's a really good chance you've never heard of this device. I only found out about it recently. And um, in the amount of time that I've had it, I can already tell you that it's very much well worth the money to get one. So the IODD2541 really is kind of uh, a hard drive enclosure on steroids. Uh, basically, you can use it as an external hard drive and it's got 256-bit encryption if you wanna use that, but it's got features that I've never seen in a device like this before. And what it does is it actually acts as a, a virtual uh, external drive, whether it's a CD drive or an external hard drive, whichever the case may be, you can use it as either one. Now, the reason this is important to me is because of the videos that I make, I'm, I, I spend a lot of time uh, installing operating systems on different devices, whether it's, uh, you know, PCs or Panda, Latte Pandas or, or Raspberry Pis or whatever. Uh, and in order to do that, I've always got to, you know, go download the ISO file, or if I've already got it, I still have to then copy it to a USB device and wait for that process to copy copy and verify and do all this stuff. And what's great about the uh, 2541 is that it allows you to put ISO files on it and then mount them as though it was uh, a, a virtual uh, optical drive. And that's where uh, the, o I, the ODD comes from is optical disk drive. Uh, so it has already saved me probably an hour or more in just the week that I've had it uh, from having to uh, copy all the all of the ISOs from my computer to USB drives. Now there are some limitations to it. It only accepts certain uh, file extensions. Uh, one of the, mostly uh, it's gonna be ISO files. There were a few other extensions, but ISOs are gonna be the primary focus here. Uh, I will say, unfortunately, it does not recognize uh, .img files or anything with a, a compression extension on the end uh, that would, you, you could then extract. It has to be an ISO file or one of the supported files. Uh, otherwise it just won't work. Now, as I mentioned, this is uh, basically a glorified a hard drive enclosure. And I can say that it does not come with a hard drive. You're gonna have to pick one of those up for yourself. Um, and I happen to have 120 gig drive laying around. Uh, you can put, uh, I've heard up to a terabyte. Uh, the, actually the guy that bought it for me, that's a funny story. Uh, I was in the Discord server of, of the guys who had put together this script uh, that I showed off a couple of weeks ago about adding 80 plus uh, different uh, applications to your uh, Open Media Vault slash Portainer setup with just a single script. I was in there talking to those guys, giving some input on some different things. And we ended up talking about um, storage devices and installing operating systems. And one of the guys in there mentioned uh, this IODD device, uh, really sold it up and talked to me about it. And I was like, well, cool, now that's on my Amazon list. And he's like, well, cool, send me your link and I'll just get it for you. And of course the stipulation of that was I would make this video. So uh, this is uh, both uh, a video that I'm really looking forward to making as well as an obligatory video to pay my dues for getting this for free. Uh, I don't believe he's got anything to do with the company, uh, the IODD company as they are out of Korea. And I don't think he is or has any part to do with the company, but uh, he suggested that I get one. So he ended up getting it for me, but he said I should make a video about it, talking about how to make the damn thing work um, because because it's not very intuitive and the eight and a half by 11 sheet that's folded in four pieces only really tells you what the buttons do, not how to use it. So uh, what I wanna focus on right now in this video is just getting it set up to, uh, to, to be able to use it in a day-to-day uh, sort of uh, f fashion. So the problem that you're probably gonna run into, in fact, the, maybe even the reason you're here is that when you first get it and you throw your hard drive in it, it's uh, the screen will pop up. It's got a little uh, LCD screen on it and it's probably just gonna say first partition. And that's it. And that's not very helpful at all, uh, especially since, like I said, the instructions are garbage that come with it. So I did some digging around and I spent a couple of hours fidgeting with it, trying to figure out different things and trying different things and, and getting nowhere until I realized that I was gonna have to uh, actually have it plugged into my computer and I was going to have to use a disk part 
to uh, convert it from a GPT uh, partition table to an MBR partition table. So what I want to do is just take a couple of minutes to show you how to get this thing set up and usable uh, so that you don't have to go through all of the headache well, that you probably already have gone through, which is why you searched and probably found this video. So let's go ahead and jump over to my desktop and take a look at how to get this thing to work. Okay, so here we are on uh, my uh, my desktop. And of course I've got uh, this PC opened up so we can see all of the drives that are in here. Uh, let's actually close network locations. So these are the hard drives I've currently got uh, either in my system or plugged into my system or whatever the case may be. And if I take uh, my device here and I plug it in like so, we'll give it just a second to recognize. All right, so here you can see that it recognized or it added a Blu-ray drive and a new volume of 111 gigs. Like I said, this is a 120 gig hard drive. Uh, it's an SSD, not that it matters. It will support hard drives or SSDs, so don't have to worry about that. Um, but if I open this up, uh, there's nothing in here right now. Uh, the problem is while it will work as a hard drive this way, uh, it won't let you do the virtual disk drive this way. In fact, if you look at this screen right now, it still says uh, first partition and that doesn't help us out at all. So uh, let's take a look at actually fixing that uh, so that we can, uh, again, make it work for the virtual drives. So uh, what we're gonna do is open up a command prompt uh, and I'm gonna drag this uh, up here like so. And I'm gonna do a uh, disk part as one word and I'll say yes to that little uh, pop up there. And then we'll do a list disk. And what I'm looking for is this disk five right here. <clears throat> I only know that off the top of my head because I can look at the size of the disk. Uh, right now, this one says 111 gigs and I just know that that's this particular drive. So uh, what I wanna do is uh, select uh, disk five and then I wanna do a clean. We're gonna do that to start things off and then we're gonna do a convert MBR and now it's been converted to MBR. So that's that's half the job already done. Uh, next thing we wanna do uh, is uh, create a partition primary. And then we wanna do a, a list volume. Oops. And so right here we can see that uh, volume seven is selected, uh, but we wanna make sure, so we'll do a select, oops, select volume seven, like so. Again, we can tell that because it's that 111 gig uh, partition there. So we'll select volume seven. Again, that's good to go. And then we'll do format uh, FS equals NTFS. We'll hit enter. And then it'll go through this process of formatting the drive as NTFS. And uh, that's it. That's all we've got to do in order to get this thing to work. But once it's done, we'll come back and we'll take another look uh, at the display on the device to make sure that we uh, uh, disconnect it and reconnect it properly. Okay, so now that the uh, the formatting is done, uh, we can see that it says first partition, first partition here still. So what we'll do is press and hold one. So it's gonna safely dismount everything. We'll give this a second. Okay, so now it says plug out. So we'll go ahead and do that. Unplug it. We'll give it just a second here. We'll plug it back in like so. All right, so now we're getting a different error message. This is good. Uh, this says no underscore ISO folder. So what we need to do now is go back to our desktop and go ahead and create that folder on the uh, hard drive. So here is uh, our folder back on the hard drive. So, or yeah, here is our uh, hard drive right here. So what we'll do, right click, we'll say create new. We're gonna say folder, we're gonna say underscore ISO. Go ahead and open that up uh, now that we've got that. All right, so here are some folders that I've got. Uh, with some different ISOs in there. <clears throat> Here's the uh, ISOs that I've been keeping on here. So I'll just go ahead and drag those over and we'll give this a moment to copy. Okay, so now that we've copied all of our files over that we wanna use, what I need to do now is reboot the device. And you can do that by pressing and holding three. So it says data saving, please wait. And now we've actually got a list of the ISOs that are on here. So what I can do is I can press eight. And as I tap eight, let me, um, you can see the different uh, 
ISOs that come up there. So let's go ahead and say we're going to use Windows 10. So I'll press Enter on the on the control pad down here, like so. So now you can see uh, that this is a double circle. Before it was a circle with an X in it, uh, and now it's a double circle. So that tells us that everything there is good to go. Um, so then we can move this over uh, to another device. All right, so I've gone ahead and plugged this into my Latte Panda and I have uh, turned on the Latte Panda. So hopefully here in a second, uh, this should pop up. So I'm gonna start tapping escape or delete on my keyboard. All right, so then if we scroll over to our boot options, we'll go to boot option one and press enter. And right there, we can see that we've got uh, both an IODD virtual CD-ROM. Um, that is what we'll see Windows 10 on, uh, as long as, yep, that's still good. And uh, below that, we've also got an external hard drive if we wanted to, for some reason, do that. But what we want to do is do the virtual CD-ROM, do save and exit. We'll say yes. We'll say enter or spacebar. And just like that, hopefully we'll see the little spinny circle here in a second. Uh, that lets us know that Windows is trying to install just like that. And there we go. Now there is the install screen for Windows 10 being booted off of an ISO file on the IODD virtual CD drive. Okay guys, there is the basic setup for the IODD2541. Uh, like I mentioned, this does have the ability to have 256-bit encryption. Uh, I'm not gonna cover that in this video uh, as I will never use it. So I'm not even gonna look into how to set it up. Um, you can also, uh, as I mentioned, you can use this as a uh, external hard drive or as a, a virtual CD-ROM that you can just plug in like we did in this video. Uh, it's got separate modes for each of those, but it's also got a, a mode that lets you do both simultaneously. And honestly, that's probably how I will use it <clears throat> is so that I can have my ISOs and have an external hard drive all in one device and not have to switch back and forth. Uh, also, if you're ever uh, going to use this on somebody else's computer to you know, help them install something or, or maybe uh, get rid of a virus or something like that using a live CD, uh, this does have the ability to have write protection on it to keep uh, things from being written to it unless you turn write protect off. Uh, so I really do appreciate that they've added that little uh, bit in there just to help protect the data that you've got on your drive. So uh, I want to give a big shout out to Jeremy for sending this over to me. I really do appreciate it. This is a very cool device. Uh, if you guys want to pick one up, uh, definitely check the link in the description down below. I will have an Amazon affiliate link where you can pick one of these up. Uh, it's not going to change your shopping habits or anything, but I'll make a couple of bucks if you buy one. So I just wanted to be transparent with that link down below. Um, but I think that's pretty much going to wrap up everything I wanted to say in this video about the IODD2541. Uh, if you found the video helpful, do me a favor, give the video a thumbs up. It would help me out a bunch. Uh, also, while you're down in the description, you can find a couple of links on ways you can support the channel. One is a coffee link uh, where you can do like a one-time tip jar kind of thing. Or if you want to uh, go over to Patreon, become a patron. Uh, there are a few different levels at which you can join. A couple of those levels will give you access to a uh, patrons only Discord server where we can hang out and chat about things. You can get tech support, whatever you want to do there. Uh, those are available for a couple of different levels of being a patron over there. So I think with all that being said, I'm going to go ahead and wrap things up here. As always, thanks for your time. I always appreciate your support and I'll talk to you in the next video.